Jonathan. What's going down with Shaq? Welcome to another episode of Nonfiction with Jonathan Soul. So I've been paying a lot of attention to the Ukraine, the Russia piece. Been paying a lot of attention to uh, how the countries that are not part of the West are starting to pull away from America. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. Now, me being in America, you would think, well, damn, that's that's kind of, you know what I mean? Putting yourself in the, in the trick bag. But it's like, if you want to understand American foreign policy, all you got to do is look at how they treat African-American people. That's all you got to do. We got it first. Then... You guys got the bullshit. Whether it's economic sanctions, whether it's bombings, whether it's Cointel Pro, we got all that shit first. The beautiful thing is, is that the BRIC countries and now the Saudis are, are starting to kind of coalesce and start to, to, to look at ways that they can trade and they can, um, they can benefit uh, each other's economies without the U.S., and by extension, without the NATO block. It, it, it kind of reminds me of um, African-American people, <laughs> you know, kind of getting up and leaving America and starting, uh, starting a new life other places. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of had that same ring to it. I know that there's a, an assumption in the American political vibration that Black people in a corner, they got to vote Democrat. You know, we can count on a certain percentage of their votes. You know, we'll trick the women and uh, we'll trick the religious people and the old people. And that's enough to get us over. But I think it's starting to wake. I think folk is starting to wake up. The sisters are definitely starting to wake up and listen to the brothers on a number of different issues. And uh, I think that we're starting to talk to our family about not just giving away something as valuable as a vote. Particularly when we get less than nothing in, in, some, in some ways for the vote. And now I'm seeing in my news different places around the country where you got these white dudes that are sitting out there by the place where you drop off your, 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 your mail-in ballot. Because, you know, the midterms is coming up and whatever. And they armed and they're kind of there to kind of intimidate people. So it's like we sliding on the Banana Republic slide for real. And it's like some of these people are the main ones that are like the conspiracy theory people. And they quote all this history. But I guess they're so arrogant, they don't realize that they're repeating the cycle. And probably the people before them who they study is repeating the cycle, and they were arrogant, and they didn't realize. And it's like, wow. Sometimes it's better not to know. Sometimes it's better to have an assumption that maybe I got more to learn, that maybe I'm not always in the right. Only thing I know is that the Democrats, they kind of posture themselves as you know, quote unquote progressive and, and, and uh, all this kind of stuff. They want you to do all the pronoun stuff and everything. But um, when it comes to, you know, give you money to help take care of your children. Nah. Now, when it comes to funding for the schools. Nah. You know, it's kind of funny. I, I saw um, in the news where they're starting to give the pronoun game to the to the elementary school kids. Meanwhile, in China, they just launched an artificial sun. It's like they got this, I think it's called fission. Uh, the fusion is the difference, but they basically built the machine that built the pla that it was able to eject the plasma ball that kind of went up into the air and it looked like a, a, like an artificial sun. Now, the reason why I bring that up and then the school pronoun thing is it takes an education system to do that. It takes children learning stuff, learning science and engineering and things like that at the lower levels to have their mind developed and their creativity developed. It takes a nation 
to want to invest in their children like that. We took shop, wood shop, plumbing. Uh, we took all those things out the schools in the 80s. And uh, a lot of our, a lot of, especially the schools in the poor sections, they didn't have the computers. They didn't have all the kind of stuff. And so we supposed, I mean, the idea of competing with China is funny. You know what I mean? It's like, you got them learning. Y'all need, y'all not even pushing STEM that heavy in the schools. But when my, my, my little one was in, in high school, a boy could go into the girl's bathroom because he said he was a girl. But in that bathroom, they didn't have soap. They didn't always have toilet paper. In that school, they didn't always have, you know, the, the, the latest computers and all that kind of stuff. I don't even remember my kids even taking no heavy computer courses. So it's kind of like they, it's like they kind of setting up the kids for failure. And I think the establishment is like, well, we setting up the kids, the American kids for failure on the one end. So we're going to import intelligent people on the other and that's supposed to make us competitive what if those smart people don't want to come to America what if those smart people want to stay in their home countries where the government actually gives a damn about the people and, and pour money into education and all that kind of stuff you got a democratic president barely democratic controlled congress and they can't, they can't stop sending money to, over to Ukraine. See, we're not just buying weapons, right? We're actually paying their government salaries. We're paying their military salaries. We're paying, we're, we're paying to keep the government open in Ukraine. It's not so long ago. I remember the, the U.S. government talking about closing down because of budgetary situation. Our, 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 our economy is in recession right now. I'm no economist and I, I barely got a grasp of the, of the ideas, but they say if you got two quarters of decline, they call it negative growth, which is funny to me, but if you got two quarters of decline, that means you're in recession. Well, that we've been in recession for a minute, but they can't, they can't approve that, uh, that infrastructure bill. You know, they still got to negotiate and, you know, this is too much for that. You adding this. But when it comes to money for Ukraine, oh, my God, that shit is. They sending that lickety split. And, and I said it before and I say it again. The only thing that the Democrats was really able to run on was the boogeyman of the of the of the Republican Party. But, you know, we wasn't in no heavy wars under Trump. Did I like the vibe on the street? The way that some of the whites was walking around, kind of, you know, oh. did I like, oh, I didn't like that. Did I like the fact that, um, you know, it kind of had a feeling of a proto fascist vibration. I just, it was just, it just felt like we was on a, we was sliding. No, I didn't like that. But I guess what I'm saying is, is that they're not offering us anything. At least with Trump, we wasn't concerned about nuclear, you know. Okay, he was fucking with Kim Jong-un for a minute. But they went over there, smoochy smoochy, and the love letters, if y'all didn't get um, Bob Woodward's books, Rage and Fear and all the other shit, you got to get it because the recording's in there off the chain. And the letters that that uh, Kim Jong-un, I guess, had written to Trump, it was it, it was so sweet. We wasn't thinking about no nukes. So I, I I don't know what to tell you. I mean, they 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 had a few look like false flag events where some uh, black guy would push an Asian person in 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 camera. You know what I mean? Make sure it was in the camera now. And then they they passed all this legislation and they was able to get money because I guess people stopped going to the Asian restaurants during COVID or whatever. They did all that made the black person a bad guy. And it was funny because I remember the week that it was passing, some white dude shot up like eight Asian massage parlors. They didn't say shit about that. 
you know. So I, I, I guess I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to run on, but um, I mean, they even got people in some states trying to fight uh, folk trying to get their loans forgiven. And if you got any sense at all, you know good and goddamn well that if folk got 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand in loans, if they get that forgiven, that's more money that's going to be going back in the economy. And isn't that what you want? Don't you want more spending? Don't you want more investment? Nah, man, we can't give it to the working class. You know, we can't give it to the, what are the proles. Is that what they call it in Rome, the proles? Okay. It's just funny that it just seemed like the Democrats can't, can't get their people in line. You know, remember when they first uh, put that bill back better or whatever the fuck it was called? All of a sudden, the blue dog Democrats come up out the woodwork. It's like, where, where this guy from West Virginia come from? What? But man, Republicans is in is in control. Man, they they got they whipped their people in line. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, I don't know what to tell. You. I'm definitely I'm definitely going to vote local. I mean, the Democrats are doing everything they can to to woo the Spanish and woo the. The important votes, it seem like to me, the Ukraines and the Afghans and everything. I hope they're going to be all right. After they, after they get through with you, man, ain't no, ain't no funds coming. You know, after a while, it's like the, the, Uber, got, the, the Uber market is going to be oversaturated. Only thing I can tell you is black people vote your interests if you believe in voting at all. Don't vote for fear. Don't vote for nothing. None of concept. Remember, uh, Ice Cube came out with a program and uh, Trump people talked to him and the Democrats were like, we'll holler at you after the election. That's very dismissive. I remember going on to uh, Biden's website. He had a whole political plan for Asian people, for uh, Indian people, about making it easy for them to come over and bring their families and everything. They didn't have shit like that for black people. And here we are two years later. What are they doing for black people? Getting back to this uh, Russia-Ukraine thing. So the latest is that the Russian intelligence, uh, military intelligence is talking about there may be a dirty bomb being prepared in Ukraine. And they're going to try to, you know, make a false flag like something that Russia did. And of course, the American administration is like, oh, this false thing that Russia's talking about, like 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 they told us that Russia blew up their own pipeline. <laughs> Russia blew up their own pipeline. Okay, all right. Russia blew up the, the bridge that they captured. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> Best I can tell you is that Biden, he you know. When we, we had people used to joke that W wasn't the smartest guy, you know, he would do little things or whatever. And, you know, people might have said Obama was weak, but we never had a president that looked like he gonna fall asleep, he's falling asleep during the interview. And then talk about run it again. Basically, I think when we look at the Democratic Party, we kind of look in that a situation where the people who write the checks don't trust none of the young people. They don't want even incremental change. And so they got to stick with the old guard, whoever's left. And if they, and since they pick Biden, that means that it's not a lot of the old guard that's left. That the, that the money interest is willing to, you know, to invest in. But the world is changing. The, the U.S., what they call homogeny, in other words, uh, home, I'm not even saying the word right, but the idea that America kind of makes the rules for the world, that shit, is, that shit is fading before our eyes. You know, they're going from a, what they call a unipolar world where, you know, basically uh, America, through their proxies like NATO and different other organizations, is setting the rules for the world to a multipolar world where, you know, it's other countries that are involved in that process. If you get a chance, just, just Google BRICS, B-R-I-C-S. 
uh, plus. And, you know, that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and, um, and South Africa. And uh, they're doing a lot of economic cooperation. They're doing a lot of trade. And usually, once you have a valuable trade situation, then the next thing is you got to protect it. So eventually, uh, this, this, this uh, kind of brick situation is going to become some kind of military mutual, you know, protection situation. Because once you had trade routes, and for example, the Nord Stream thing, you think they're going to let that keep happening? At, at some point, they're going to have to protect the pipeline. Because what's happening is America <clears throat> is trying to wean Europe off of the cheap gas and stuff that they're getting from Russia. And so well, what are they going to use? They're going to use American gas, but they charge them crazy high prices. And you even see some of the former Soviet bloc countries, they kind of complaining. It's like, okay, we can't afford this. And it's like, what benefit do you get out of it following America's lead? What do you get? Well, uh, you know, I'm listening to this one general and he's saying that the reason why, one of the reasons why they use nuclear weapons in the past is because they didn't have accuracy. And so... Uh, since you couldn't really pinpoint a particular, you know, target, you needed a, a weapon with a large blast area so you could just throw it in the general area and it, and it wipe everything out. He's saying nowadays we got precision. We got satellite imagery. We got the radar, so all that kind of stuff. We got the constant communication. We got the drones. And so, you know, in terms of uh, war fighting, they don't even really need it like that. And besides the whole mutually assured destruction situation. So I, I got to tell you, man, um, let me wrap up with this. If y'all ever get a chance, look up Mumia Abu-Jamal Star Wars commentary. Mumia Abu-Jamal is one of my heroes. And uh, he's a brother who was a journalist. He's a Black Panther in Philadelphia. Um, he was uh, convicted for a crime he didn't commit. And um, he's been on death row for decades. He basically did a commentary, and I don't want to spoil it for you, but he talked about how popular Star Wars was when it first came out. And uh, that America kind of saw themselves as the rebels fighting against the evil empire. You know, but that came out in the 70s. And in reality, when Lucas was writing, if memory serves, he was kind of thinking about the Nixon administration and all that kind of stuff. So really... You know, from Amir's point of view, America was the empire. And the rebels is all these black and brown countries that they was oppressing. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's 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 what the you know, and Darth Vader was the military, you know, that kind of thing. So uh so so you know, when we when we hear them make Russia out to be the ultimate bad guy, just remember these are the same people. That when the flood and when the hurricane hit New Orleans, they was calling black people refugees. Just remember that. I love you guys. Hope your dreams come true. John the Soul, John the Soul .com. You can find me on Twitter at Jonathan Soul, J O H N A T H A N S O U L, on Instagram, and every now and then I post on Facebook. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves and your family. Peace.